Hello YouTube, this is IDNO, and I am here to show you some more advanced redstone circuits. Alright, so last time I showed you how to build the uh, full adder. I want to show you guys a few more things. Some people had some questions and were a little confused about why you would use this, where it would be useful, um, and then also some other things I wanted to show you uh, as well. So uh, to answer the first question, this is only useful for people who are interested in building computer systems, uh, you know, calculators. Um, say you want to build an emulator for a system, this would go in that. So, anyway, um, a few things that I wanted to go over first. Uh, let's go over some of the circuits that I was going to do. So, uh, within any ALU, you're going to find any of the basic uh, logic gates. You'll find the AND gate, which will only, excuse me, only turn on, <laughs> I am failing horribly right now, when both of the inputs are true. So, yeah. there. Um, you would use this uh, in an adder to basically cover the entire uh, carry function of an adder. So, when input A and input B are on, output carry. Um, the next one, and I showed this before, is an XOR, and I'm just going to go ahead and build a pretty basic one, show exactly how it's used and where you would use it. Oh. Okay, so this is an XOR, and the way it works is you've got, again, two inputs, one output, and it stands for exclusive OR. And this one will only turn on when one of the inputs is on. If two of them are on, it turns off. Both of them are off, it's already off. So, it doesn't matter. Um, and the way this one works is you've got this first initial torch here and here. And these are constantly powering these torches. These are the output torches. Now, when you turn one of them on, this one right here turns off. And everything works. Now... <clears throat> the reason we have this up here, excuse me, is when both of these torches over here are off, it doesn't power this redstone, which doesn't power this torch, which and then, which you know, then in turn powers these two pieces of redstone and shuts the whole thing off. Um, this is used to compare two bits, basically two inputs. Um, if they are both on, then it's you know, yeah, it just makes it, it tells you when the two inputs are exactly the same. So, these right here are essentially the circuits you will find in any adder. Um, in fact, you can actually build an adder using just these two things. Uh, let's go ahead and throw one together real quick for you. And a lot of people don't, oh, wow, don't like to use these kinds of gates because they are rather large. But... I personally don't mind them too much. Uh, you get a nice tileable design using these. Uh, they are kind of big, but you know, they work. Um, now, for this one, we have outputs A and outputs B. And I'll explain these in just a moment. Um, yeah, we need to do this. All right. So with this adder, you have got input A and B. And if you power one of them, the one goes through, just like in that one over there. Power the other one, this line turns on. Okay? Now, you might notice that there are two torches that can power this line, and the reason for that is... An adder has three inputs. A full adder has three inputs. You've got your A, B, and carry in. Carry in looks like this. Now, say you were the bit before this one had already said, hey, I'm two ones, let's go ahead and carry over. You still have both the inputs. What happens here? Like this. This turns on the carry and doesn't turn on the output. Put this in here. Turns on the carry and the output. 
I went into a long rant there and it was kind of not intelligent, so I'm going to go ahead and skip all that. But anyway, um, all you need to know is that you have three inputs on any adder. And any adder consists of two XOR with an AND between them to say, this is carry. All right, anyway, moving on. So, uh, oh, also one more thing I wanted to point out was this right here, and this is something that a lot of people might not know, and it's the properties of glowstone. Uh, glowstone has some pretty interesting properties for redstone that they've actually recently added. Um, a lot of people weren't a fan of them, but I personally think it's awesome. Um, they are pretty simple, but significant. Uh, one of them is this right here. Bud switches, which used to be an issue uh, with pistons. Anyone building with pistons will recognize this right here. It's, it's extremely frustrating when you want to build something. You have to have a line going over piston. To fix this one, you had to do this. At least two blocks over for it to not affect it. Now, glowstone obviously doesn't do that. Um, another cool property with glowstone is it does not power a signal down. So you cannot put a torch here and have it go all the way down. However, you can have it go up. Furthermore, glowstone will not pinch a uh, redstone signal. So if you want to split a signal into two different directions using a uh, using a piece of glowstone instead of, say, a repeater to power up into the next block, you would just do this right here, and the signal can pass down and up. So, anyway, that's that's the interesting thing. Um, now, what I'm going to show you guys today is how to invert the signal of A and B. So, the uh, easiest way to do that, obviously, is to put an XOR, just like I built over here, uh, on both of these inputs, and this will say this will invert both of the signals. So I'm going to go ahead and start thinking about how to do this. Let's split these up a little bit. Um, let's see. So the B one, and I will show you guys it subtracting as soon as I'm done building it. So all right, this is the XOR that I showed you guys couple days ago, and I really, really like this one because it does basically everything any other XOR would do uh, in a fraction of the space, uh, and very, very fast, so really cool. Alright, so there's the first part. Now, doing this does add two extra pieces of input. Um, these inputs are not an issue, really, because what they do is you have a line that will go across uh, the entire B line and also the entire A line as well, as soon as I build that, and it uh, is used to invert the entire thing. So right now, um, let's just say that I have a you know, thing I want to invert. So, do this. Now, even though the input going in is zero, it turns into a one. Go like this. It essentially inverts the uh, signals. So, um, very useful things for people who want to do things like adding, subtracting, uh, division, any of those things. So, let me go ahead and I'm going to skip through building this and I'll come back to show you the next part. Uh, as soon as I'm done, and I'll show you how to subtract and everything. So, all right. So I went ahead and finished building the uh, second XOR for the A input, and I also stacked it three times, so we have a four-bit uh, ALU here, or you know, adder. All right. So I did say that I was going to go ahead and show you guys how to uh, subtract. So I will do that. Let me go ahead and clear off a few things that we don't need. Um, those are important just uh, for stacking reasons, for tiling reasons. Uh, on the first bit, you wouldn't have a carry out on this first on this side here. So um, 
it, the carryout would be on this side for all of them. So anyway, um, again, to add two numbers, you just input here. 1 plus 1 should equal 2. Uh, right now it equals 1. What's going on here? I seem to have broken something. Let's see. We've got 1 plus 1. I'm going to go ahead and figure out what's wrong, and I will be back. Alright, so simple mistake, but still, you know, one of those mistakes. Uh, you need glowstone, or you need redstone on top of this glowstone. So, derp. Anyway, we've got 1 plus 1 equals 2. Alright, and just to kind of further cement that, 1 plus 2 will equal 3. And um, if you have any questions about binary, I can also address those later. I won't go into it right now just because, you know, I kind of press for time. So, um, now, to subtract with an adder, again, you invert the B input and do carry in. Now, the way you carry in with this one is you just provide power here. So, carry in, invert the B line. Zero. Let's go ahead and do. Uh, let's do a bigger number. Uh, let's do four minus two. Now again, yeah, binary is correct. <laughs> two. Okay. Let's do four minus three. Should equal one. It is. All right. And um, again, this is. Very, very practical for things, um, you know, in any kind of counting system uh, to, you know, add, you know, just input, input, subtract, do this. And then if you wanted to do, say, more advanced things like simple division or multiplication, you just, uh, you know, you take a number, say you want to divide 6 by 7, uh, you know, you would just subtract uh, six from six a certain amount of times, uh, seven times, really. And uh, to multiply, you you know, say you want to do two times four, you would just do two times two, save the output, put the output into here, would equal four times that by two, uh, save the output, and just do that four times. And I mean that right there is the heart of any AOU. Uh, of course, there are more advanced systems that will get into precise numbers, uh, floating point adders, stuff like that. But I really don't want to get into that since I don't quite understand it myself. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so we've got the second part of our ALU, which is, you know, the invert. We've got carry in right here. And then next week, I'll show you guys how to do some more advanced things like, uh, well, not really advanced, they're really, sim really simple things. But uh, don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Um... Hopefully you guys are enjoying this and learning, and uh, you know, let me know what you guys think. And of course, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, do whatever you guys want to do. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, have a good day.